Yo, what's up guys, y'all video and today, man, I'll be talking about the Phoenix Suns, but in particular, I'll be talking about Monty when this movie just came out from Woj and Champs and everybody else, that the Phoenix Suns have let Monty Williams go, and they are parting ways with their head coach, who, yeah, I know the last two elimination games at home has, his team has lost by a combined 60 points, but this is a guy that won coach of the year last year, led the Phoenix Suns to a record of 64 and 18, and led them to the finals as well in the Bucks. They did blow a 2 0 lead in the playoffs in the finals, obviously. But Monty Williams was not given a great hand, he wasn't dealt a great hand this season in terms of the depth or anything like that at all. Let's go ahead and just do a little rundown. Monty Williams, Monty Williams became the head coach of the Phoenix Suns in 2019. And in the first year, the Phoenix Suns struggled 34 and 39. They finished 10th in the Western Conference the next year absolute just meteoric rise they finished 51 and 21 second in the nba western conference and monty williams um wins coach of the year in the next season as the phoenix suns go 64 and 18 a tremendous regular season first overall in the western conference like i said monty williams ends up winning the coach of the year and then we know what happens in game seven in phoenix they get absolutely bitched by Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks but still that was a phenomenal regular season for them yes yeah, disappointing to lose in that fashion but hey at the end of the day 64 wins is good I know regular season you obviously want playoff success over regular season obviously that triumphs it but still that was a very successful regular season for Monty Williams and then this year injuries from Devin Booker the midseason trade of Kevin Durant the lack there of depth to this season, they go 45 and 37, fourth in the Western Conference, and beat the Clippers. Yeah, albeit an injured Kawhi Leonard, who I believe had a major injury that we just didn't really know about until the series was damn near over. They closed that series out. I mean, a healthy Clippers would have beaten them, let's be completely honest here, but still uh, is besides the point. They go ahead and face the Denver Nuggets, who I, I can admit I did have them beating them. Was it just because I looked at two top 10, 15 players in the league and Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, but like they can carry and then the bench can just do, they they can do uh, a little bit here and there. Um, no, Denver Nuggets absolutely wiped them. I mean, it was six games. Uh, they ended up closing it out in game six, absolutely bitching the Phoenix on that live television for the second year in a row on their home court in an elimination game for the Phoenix Suns. They go absolutely sad. Um, definitely underwhelming to be honest, but you did also lose the best team in the Western Conference, in my opinion, was the first seed for a majority of the year, really for like all the year. The Denver Knights were the first overall seed. This is a team that right now, probably the favorites to win the whole entire thing right now. So losing to that team, it hurts, I know. It, it really is the fashion they went out in that game, but I'm not gonna lie, I don't think this is the right move at all. The reason I say that is because you made a midseason trade of trading away Kevin. Uh, uh, you made a midseason trade of trading for Kevin Durant, trading away Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson, two high-level role players. Trading, trading away Jay Crowder, who he wasn't going to play with y'all anyways. It really doesn't matter trading away a guy like that. And let's go ahead and just look at the Phoenix Suns depth, and let's let's see who really was the problem here. Was it Monty Williams, or was the lack of depth of the Phoenix Suns and Guy in particular uh for this Phoenix Suns going out sad is gotta be DeAndre Ayton. Like it might have been a, a decision between DeAndre Ayton and Monty Williams to trade DeAndre Ayton. The fact that y'all matched the offer sheet last year for the Pacers for DeAndre Ayton, knowing that y'all probably didn't want to give him that much amount of money. Y'all just didn't want to give up um a number one overall pick who again trade who y'all drafted over the likes of Luka Doncic and Trey Young and so many more players I just can't think about off the top of my head right now. You could have just simply traded away a guy like DeAndre Ayton if it was a Monty versus uh, Ayton type of thing. I know they really just uh, weren't really like cool or anything like that. I remember last season, there were turmoil between the both of them. Um, both of them ended up staying and now Monty Williams is gone. Um, yeah, yeah. let's go ahead and look at the Phoenix Sun, Suns depth outside of Kevin Durant and uh, Devin Booker. So DeAndre Ayton. Underwhelming season for DeAndre Ayton. He was one of the, he's one of the softest bigs in the league. He demands the ball in the paint and he's just not that guy unfortunately um so let's go ahead and count how many depth pieces the phoenix suns actually have outside of the likes of a devin booker and a kevin Durant. deandre Ayton, i guess he's supposed to be your third option i'm not gonna 
even gonna count him okay let's just go ahead and just count this right here um jack lindell as a backup big that's one depth piece Karen Payne as a backup point guard that's two depth pieces tj warren as a backup small forward or backup forward in general that's the third depth piece Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Kevin Durant, and three death pieces against a really elite Denver Nuggets offense who picked it up this series defense, especially KCP and Aaron Gordon. I'm going to give them their respect. And you just fired your head coach, Monty Williams, for Kevin Durant, who you traded for. You traded all these assets, all those first round picks, elite level role players, and Mikhail, who was sent into a star with the Brooklyn Nets and Cam Johnson, who had a really good season for the Brooklyn Nets as well, and looking to cash in on like a massive deal this offseason, earning himself at least an average annual value of 28, of not 28, of $20 million AAV this season. So they went out and did their thing without the Phoenix Suns. And y'all fired Monster Williams for having a lack thereof of depth. So the last four out of five coach of the year candidates have been fired. Which is just absolutely insane. The only guy left standing is Tom Thibodeau. So that is absolutely insane. Um, so that is uh, Moss Williams fired. Uh, that is Nick Nurse fired this offseason. Mike Budenholzer fired this offseason. This off uh, Dwayne Casey fired, obviously, a couple years back from the Toronto Raptors. Uh, literally right after he won Coach of the Year. So that's uh, actually insane. Um, yeah, Monster Williams, the last three years with the Phoenix Suns. 51 and 21, lost in the finals. A year after that, 64 and 18, lost in the conference finals. When he won coach of the year, when they lost at home, went out sad to the Dallas Mavericks. And then last, and then this year, 45 and 37, lost conference finals, got absolutely bitched at home in the second round of the playoffs once again. To the Denver Nuggets, the superior team, and really every single facet of imagination. And in a three-year span, he's the winningest coach in the league and he just got fired for having a lack thereof of depth. Bons Williams will get a call very, very soon. He is a good head coach in his league. Um, he definitely will be uh, not unemployed for a while. He definitely will get uh, employed very, very soon. He is a good coach in his league. And the Phoenix Suns, I don't know who y'all expect to be better than this with the lack thereof depth. Like, good luck with that. And. An aging Chris Paul making all this money, $28 million he made this season. My God. DeAndre Ayton making $30 million, getting absolutely bitched in the paint. It was supposed to be your third option. Um, Devin Booker, phenomenal season, making $30 million a year. Kevin Durant, underwhelming series against the Denver Nuggets. Uh, but he did do his thing against the Clippers. I'll give him his credit. Making $44 million a year. Y'all really don't have too much cap space to make uh substantial moves so this is really y'all core cool unless y'all trade the likes of deandre a and chris paul so good luck with all that monster williams like i said he will get a call very very soon because he is a good coach he is a good head coach in this league so phoenix suns don't really get this move at all uh sons i guess comment down below i don't know what y'all expect the monster williams to do i mean who do y'all want him to play like give me a name like who do you want him to play what do you want him to do like this team from top to bottom it's top heavy it's really is top heavy okay but uh yeah my team was fired in my opinion this is a l move uh disappointing move uh i think he's a good head coach in his league and he's fired because his team went out sad but the, no depth at all i mean the nba is it, it, it's a cold world man like i said four of the last five coach of the year winners have been fired and we just throw this in right here as a heat fan Eric Spolstra, people have now realized this might even be the best coach in the league. Never won a coach of the year. And last season, we were the number one seed in, in the Eastern Conference. Over the last five head coaches have been fired. <laughs> That's insane, isn't it? That's an insane stat right there. But uh, yeah, wow. That is an insane move, in my opinion, man. That is an insane move right there. But other than that, that is what I'm going to go down below. Drop a like, comment down below, sub up. Make sure to follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok. It's your boy John. Hope you got you in the video. And I'm out, man. Peace.